Brian of House Giant, the hottest, most up-and-coming squire of the Middle Ages. His world had been turned upside down when he was sentenced, along with his knight, Sir Donald Krieg, to four winters in prison for trampling the village crops whilst attempting to ride a pig. But this was no ordinary penitentiary. He found himself in a state-of-the-art castle, fitted with the newest high-tech stone walls and moat technology, with the entire premises stationed by the finest king's guards in all the realm, organized by the fearsome Baron Tesco, getting out of this one would be impossible for a measly peasant squire such as him. Yet, despite this, something inside Brian said different, urgier than the urgiest of urges. Yes, Brian was going to escape. On day one, roll call was held in the Great Hall, where Brian got a good look at some of the scum he'd been dumped in here with. Maiden Beans, Duke Dimples, and Sir Derwin. Well met, Sir Derwin! Well met! As Brian was only a squire, he had to greet any knight in this manner. These were all once great nobles who had committed horrible crimes, such as plotting rebellion and defecating in the town well. Vagabonds such as these made Brian even more motivated to get away from here, back to his medieval wooden hut where his medieval peasant wife would be waiting for him. With this, he set about exploring the castle grounds, searching for anywhere he could exploit. A missing stone in the otherwise impenetrable wall, or a random wooden platform on one of the ramparts. Brian couldn't believe it. It was as if they were asking for him to escape. Didn't they know Brian's father, Gigantio Briantio, had studied carpentry under the great Leonardo da Vinci? And here was the perfect platform to construct the family speciality, a trebuchet. Brian launched straight into action. He knew exactly what he needed. Some timber and plywood for the catapult frame, leather and steel beams to make a nice sturdy catapult bucket. In no time at all, the recipe was complete. The only issue now was, although giant by name, Brian wasn't nearly strong enough to carry an entire trebuchet's worth of wood upstairs. So unless he was crafting his catapult out of Ents, he was going to have to find some help. But teaming up with someone in a place such as this was like searching for gold in a trough full of horse poo. Bronwyn, Hogwash, these were not exactly infamous names. Oh wait, hang on, a fight's just broke out, this'll work. Whoever wins this fight will prove their strength, thus winning the honour of being Brian's teammate. Oh great. They're both unconscious, and they were both such promising candidates as well. Okay, what about this mysterious gentleman named Baskethead? No, this guy was way too creepy. Brian didn't want to wet himself during the escape, and at this point he was becoming a bit impatient, so he decided to just settle for the next person he came across, who happened to be Lady Officer of House Officer. She seemed trustworthy. Hmm, we shall call you Officer Officer. And with his new sidekick by his side, they made their way back up to the wooden platform on the walls, helped each other past a huge iron door, and Brian got to work constructing his masterpiece. First the base, the buttery base, and then the buttery biscuit body too. All it needed now was a strong catapult arm and a big heavy counterweight. Oh, bollocks. They've forgotten the counterweight. What an oversight. Officer Officer suggested using Brian's mother as a counterweight, to which Brian retorted that although they were in medieval times, that joke was very old-fashioned, and to bring Brian's mother into this was not in keeping with a good constructive prison break partner relationship. It hurt his feelings very much. Officer Officer apologised, and they instead decided to search around the off-limits areas of the castle. To do this, they would need a red keycard, which they would craft out of something known as a circuit board. Brian assumed this was a tool for some newfound sport, such as surfing. However, after beating up Officer Flump with a makeshift sock mace, he discovered this device's real purpose was to open security doors. After clambering to the most secluded, decaying floors of the prison using a homemade grappling hook, Brian discovered an old, untended chest in which, rather conveniently, was a mink condition catapult counterweight. And with this almost unbelievable luck, he and Officer Officer sprinted back beyond the iron door to their work in progress, adding the counterweight in and then, oh for God's sake, this time Brian had left the bucket back in his room. You just stay there, Officer Officer, I'll just pop back and get it. But before he had returned, they had both missed roll call. The prison was sent into lockdown and Officer Officer was ravaged by a pack of police dogs. 
Thankfully, following a stint in the prison dungeons peeling potatoes, the plan was back on. This time, all the pieces had come together. They hauled the counterweight into place, Brian shoved the bucket on the end, and they heaved themselves up onto the trebuchet with great anticipation. This was it. Brian gave the countdown. Three. Whoa, whoa! Ooh. Oh dear, not only had Brian messed up the countdown, but as it turned out there was in fact an outer wall in this prison they hadn't accounted for. Aside from picking up a major concussion, Brian was just feeling rather… defeated. His masterful plan had failed, and he would now be stuck here for four long cold winters. Ooh, he wished he had brought his mittens to prison. But don't give up yet, said Officer Officer in a comforting tone. They had just learnt this prison had a whole outer wall they hadn't even properly discovered. And with this epiphany, Brian set out further afield to explore. The biggest conundrum with this outer wall was it was surrounded in its entirety by a deep moat. Therefore, Brian would need to figure out some ingenious way to cross it. Oh, no way, it's fine, there's a boat. This boat wasn't in great condition, but with his carpentry skills, Brian was sure he could make it work. Now if he could just find a way down to the docks, perhaps he could jump down the prison well. Well met, Brian shouted as he tumbled down the hole. But getting to his future ferry's destination from here was going to require quite some tunnel, seeing as the well was on the opposite side of the prison. In that case, how about this small secretive room in close proximity to his escape ship that none of the guards ever checked? Well met, thought Brian. This was perfect. At once, he and Officer Officer held a meeting. Here was the new plan. Officer Officer would find a way to cause a prison-wide distraction, whilst Brian would dig the tunnel down to the docks and repair the boat just in time for the two to rendezvous as they both sailed their way to freedom. It was flawless, and Officer Officer got to work straight away. Her mischievous distraction strategy involved cosplaying as a castle ghost and scaring the guards out of their wits. She would go full Scooby-Doo and pretend to possess a suit of armor, and to make such a costume, she needed a whole load of metal. Therefore, she decided to sign herself up for the horseshoe-making job. The issue being, a maiden named Anne of House Gun already held that position. So Officer Officer beat her up repeatedly with a sock mace until she was unable to make horseshoes anymore. It was quite messed up actually, she literally waited outside the hospital and punched her every time she tried to leave. I mean, forget Anne Gun, that feels more like Anne Red Flag to me. After all of this, however, she could take the job for herself, then infiltrating the prison forge and bagging as much molten metal as she could get her filthy blood-stained hands on. Meanwhile, Brian had gathered the materials to craft two wooden oars, and had also come up with a new invention of his known as the multi-tool. It was essentially just a spade and a pickaxe sellotaped together, so it wasn't quite as revolutionary as he thought it was. But with this, he could begin to diggy diggy a majestic hole. Heading back to the secret room, he tunneled his way through the earth until he reached what appeared to be the prison sewer system. Replacing a broken lever with a chair like he'd stolen from one of the Grand Hall's dinner tables, he made his way through the castle's underbelly and finally out to the docks. Now to fix the boat whilst Officer Officer drew the guard's attention. She had crafted herself a rather fetching set of golden armor, equipped with a sword fit for a queen. Slay, she thought to herself as she made her way to the prison armory, hoisted herself up onto a stand, and tried to stay very, very still. Minutes began to feel like hours, no thanks to an itchy bum cheek that she couldn't risk scratching, as Chief Warden Baron Tesco called a meeting with his royal guards. How long was this gonna take, thought Brian, who had fixed up the boat and got his oars in place quite a while ago. Finally, Officer Officer saw her opportunity. Boo! She shouted in her spookiest voice, but oh. The prank had not exactly gone to plan. She now found herself in a 1 vs 6 against the toughest warriors in all the kingdom. But whether out of primal fear or just cold rage, at that moment, something awoke inside Officer Officer which made her unbeatable. She took them all on, besting each in mortal combat one after the other. Brian could hear the cries of battle from all the way at the docks. If he stuck around here much longer, the alarm would be raised and the prison placed under high alert. With this, he made the tough decision to leave his partner behind. Rowing his little pixely arms off, the boat came creaking to a halt on the other side of the moat. Brian took one last look back, scrunching his eyes trying to spot his faithful sidekick. 
but he very quickly stopped this exercise as a wayward arrow whistled past his ear. Run away! And at that moment, Brian vowed never to be caught again. And more than that, he promised himself the giant Brian dynasty would forever be a family of free men. Back at the castle, Officer Officer had calmed down from her adrenaline-fueled frenzy. Baron Tesco was terrified, and so he offered her a deal. She would take ownership of the prison. No, she would inherit all of the prisons in the kingdom, the whole system under her command. So much power, an Officer Officer knew just what to do with it. She would hunt down the man she used to call Sidekick. The man who left without her, and she wouldn't stop there. She would lock up his son, and his son after him, and his son, and hit, and you get the point. From this day forth, any Brian who was giant would never be free again.